Hello, my name is Charlie Kaplan. I'm the head of international marketing for Perceptive Software. Welcome to the AP Automation videocast series sponsored by Perceptive. A few things to remember during this live broadcast, if you'd like to submit a question, please join the uh, group chat button, which is in the lower right hand of your e-digest. And we'll have a Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. To kick things off, without any further ado, I'm pleased to introduce Craig LeClaire, who's the Vice President and Principal Analyst at Forrester Research. Craig serves enterprise architecture professionals and is an internationally recognized expert in business process management. He initiated Forrester's series on untamed business processes, including customer onboarding, invoice management, medical health records, financial compliance, and customer communications management. Craig specializes in helping companies transform from manual and paper-based processes to the mobile and digital world, as well as in information management, dynamic case management, enterprise content management, electronic signature, document imaging and capture, and document output for customer communications management. Craig is also the leading analyst on the outsourcing of document processing services, including managed print services. So without further ado, Craig, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure, Charles, and thank you for that uh, nice introduction. Always seems like I've done a lot of things, a lot more than I actually have when you read something like that. Um, but today we're talking about digital content transformation, um, and that really refers, it's a concept to really, uh, it really refers to companies needing to turn their business into data, uh, to really weed out uh, paper and analog processes, really to kind of match where the consumer is today where their customers are that are racing ahead with social and mobile solutions. So uh, it's, it's, this is one piece focusing on one special, a special area, but it's really a lot of the principles apply to how to get an overall digital uh, transformation plan for your organization. So uh, let's, let's jump in. I'm going to talk a little bit about what untamed processes are to kind of set the tone and then dive into invoice processing and then make some very specific recommendations. Um, you know, first, and I hinted at this in my opening remarks, uh, we're in a very different time right now. We're in a time where the customer has more information and more power, uh, much like the way um, our parents might have bought a car years ago. They, they went to the one dealer in town who had 90% of the information. Uh, today, um, the average online um, uh, time spent for a car buyer is like 11 hours. So when they go into the dealership, um, you know, they already have as much information probably as, as the person they're talking to about the car. So, you know, this is just an example of how the customer has a new set of power that they never had before. Um, and companies have to adjust to this new type of customer. And that's really why the narrative in the industry, particularly at Forrester, is all about the age of the customer, customer experience, understanding the customer journey, and so forth. Now, you know, invoice processing, you know, tends to be, um, you know, a process that doesn't touch the customers as directly as others. Yet a lot of these same principles apply whether you're interacting with your vendor management community, uh, whether you're uh, interacting with your internal stakeholders within a company. Um, you know, there is, um, you know, a lot of the principles of all of these changes that really apply to invoice processing, as I'll talk about. It's one of a category of untamed processes that we talk about. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you what that is. Um, there really are two broad categories of business processes, you know, on the, Lower side of this, of this chart, you see uh, package and structured apps. These can be ERP or customer relationship management, supply chain management, but basically they're um, you know, uh, processes where you have a system of record that's uh, critical to running the operation of the business. Um, often thought of as back office. Um, these are extremely important and, and valuable assets that, that companies have. But increasingly, um, what's happened over the years is that the real process that the customer needs to um, uh, go through is, is an end-to-end -end process that kind of crosses a lot of um, those package uh, and structured applications and databases that are on the left. So when you think about you know, customer onboarding and customer service, 
um, you know, the experience of the, of the customer is one that crosses, um, you know, a servicing and a claims uh, and a you know, pre-sales process. And oftentimes the interaction has to float and, and interact with all, uh, you know, many of these packaged and structured applications on the lower part of the slide. And the result is a very untamed process. It's one that, um, you know, has lots of human activity, that has lots of paper in the process, that has, um, you know, just a, a lot of unstructured information as well as structured information. Remember that all of the information in the left is tends to be highly formatted and structured field-based information that, that is what ultimately is the end um, part of the process for feeding those, those packaged and structured apps. So let me drill down a little bit more to make that clear. This is a very important point when we look at this overall um, you know, presentation. The uh, packaged apps on the left, um, the systems of record, you know, the structured data, you know, in band, uh, single process focus, well structured, and a very strong IT focus. In other words, you have groups that just manage the SAP environment. You have groups that just manage the Oracle eBusiness Suites environment. You have, you know, the group that manages the uh, CRM implementation. So. Um, you know, they're very well organized and, and well managed. Now, on the untamed side, on the right, quite the contrast. Uh, it's not just about structured data. It's about unstructured data. You know, they're out of band. They tend to be more chaotic because they involve more human decision making, uh, more non-value added activity like uh, looking at one screen and entering that data into another application um, or having a last mile um, type of uh, experience with getting signatures, wet signatures perhaps you know, from a customer that then has to be returned as a document and go into a document automation process. Um, so there's a lot more cross process coordination and a poorer IT focus. You know, there usually isn't an IT or technology management group that's focused on the entire end and customer onboarding process. They're focused on the product silos underneath that. So this is why they become uh, untamed. In the packaged apps on the left, the tendency is, you know, you're buying best practice, which is why you bought the packaged app. You tend to adapt the people to the process that's embedded in that app. On the right, um, you know, you tend to modify uh, with more agile technologies the applications uh, to adapt to the people. And hence, there's a lot more tendency to customize and to, and to do interesting and new things on the untamed business process side. So that's what we kind of mean, you know, by that, um, you know, if you, you know, if you look at it, as I build this out, what you end up with is a lot of gaps in between the packaged apps, you know, for which the, um, you know, is one of the reasons for the untamedness of the end to end process. So, um, you know, they, they really contribute. Uh, a lot of companies have more than one ARP solution. You know, they have uh, five, or six, maybe they have one provider for packaged apps, but they're on three different versions. So, you know, the invoice processing solution that we talk about has to be able to, um, you know, feed generically uh, metadata that can be absorbed often by multiple ERP solutions. Um, so, you know, some of the untamedness um, really results from having to interact with multiple back office systems, uh, none of which communicate in exactly the same way. So this is an example um, looking at the ERP environment. So we're drilling down into the uh, enterprise resource planning bubble there. Uh, and you look at the kind of things that um, you know, are, are there. Sort of the, the core functions within ERP are general ledger, accounts receivable, accounts payable, which really is the focus of this discussion, cash management. But outside of it, these are the untamed processes that, that sort of float around that. Um, and if you look at it from the perspective of the uh, ERP solution that you bought, uh, most of these end-to-end -end processes on the outside are not really in their sphere of competence. They don't have a module for SOX reporting. Uh, they don't really have ex travel and expense management, or, or they don't have a, um, you know, a full contract, man a contract life cycle management solution. So, um, you know, they do what they do well but it leaves an opening for bringing in other technology platforms, developing other processes that hence become you know, untamed. Um, so from the 
abandoned processes mean that from the perspective of that um, structured uh, package application, there's an end-to-end -end function that is abandoned from their perspective. You know, their goal is to absorb data in the right format to put it in that system of record. And they really don't care about that overall, um, you know, fixed asset process. Um, they have their hands full in keeping up to the compliance demands and, and other technology uh, uh, movements within the core ERP functions that they're providing. Completely understandable. So uh, along the lines with that, um, I, this is just a very quick uh, slide to show you that a lot of the packaged application areas are just consumed with uh, having to meet a lot of compliance requirements. You know, a lot of the, uh, their customers really look to them to, to give them the support they need for new um, um, uh, compliance. So if you're in the you know, post-closing uh, or rather pre-closing for mortgage um, and, and it's the loan origination system supporting that as the, as the core packaged app, uh, meeting, you know, Dodd-Frank compliance is something they would look to the loan administration vendor to provide, right? That's why you have an external vendor. So that's where there's a lot of uh, focus on that. Um, but if you're a bank, um, you're hiring floors of risk management, um, you know, and auditors to deal with Basel III, the, the, the capital rules, for example. Um, this is all on top of, you know, every wave, every crisis we have generates more and more compliance. This goes back all the way to um, you know, to uh, SOX, which came, you know, came out of, um, you know, Enron, um, uh, you know, uh, debacle. Um, you know, then you have all of the legislation that came in after the financial crisis of 2008, um, you know, more and different types of filing, more transparency became the, the, the real movement after 2008 because of the documentation support that we were demanding just wasn't giving enough insight that could prevent something like um, the bad behavior of 2008. So, you know, it's just more and more and more and more. So this is where the, particularly the packaged apps have a real problem in meeting these customer end of experience needs because you have a fast moving consumer technology environment that needs all kinds of new supports, all types of omni-channel, um, you know, uh, support. And yet uh, you're not going to get that from those core system providers because they're, their heads down worrying about you know, these, these other transformations that are occurring. So when you look at invoice processing, here are some pain points. This is based on research we did. We talked to you know, 100 companies doing invoice processing. Um, there's just a ton of paper and paper handling. And I always, uh, it's always amusing to me, you, know, you hear uh, at analyst conferences and what, what, what the, you know, the narrative in the industry, it's all about big data. You know, it's all about um, you know, social and mobile applications. And when I talk to people, I say, but what if you could just get rid of the paper? What would that do? They go, oh, that'd be great. If I could just do that, that would be, you know, awesome. <laughs> you know, so there's this, um, you know, um, um, practical blocking and tackling that companies really need to do to digitize their business. And if they don't, they're going to fall prey to other competitors of theirs that are digitizing faster. A lot of it gets down to, this is a perfect example, um, you know, AP departments are overwhelmed with paper. Document handling is inconsistent, uh, consistently cited as costly and time consuming. Um, you know, one company had 200, 300,000 invoices per year. That's relatively small without any electronic documents, EDI or front end capture technology. So that's a pure paper process. Um, 35 AP employees were left with a large quantity of paper to process each day. Uh, so um, there's just a, a lot of, even though we've been beating up from a content management industry for quite a while, on this use case because it's very clear it's got a clear ROI it doesn't get into a lot of process variation so it's the success rate for implementation is very high you know in, in invoice management from a content and process perspective it's one of the most successful areas for implementation of ECM that, that, that there's been um, there's still a ton of it out there and a ton of companies that need help um, you need to pay on time uh, this is the visibility um, standardization. Uh, there are a lot of wayward payward, you know, paper processes, uh, poor on-time payment, you know, records. Uh, you know, when you don't pay on time, you have irate vendors. Now they are vendors, but they're still it's not good behavior. Um, you know, AP employees are left scrambling for status on invoices. 
instead of having uh, the kind of reporting that they need. Um, so this is uh, you know just from different managers of the AP process. Uh, payment of people issues can't effectively manage people or cash. Um, the untamed processes left workers using their time ineffectively and unable to manage cash flow. So they're they're running around, scurrying around, dealing with paper, analog, you know, 1980s type processes. They're not looking at you know the, the information they need to really manage the process and meet the the business outcomes of of AP. And we'll talk about what those are. Um, the, you know, one company uh, implemented OCR technology and document workflow stated from a 32 day turnaround to a seven day turnaround, offered documents um, of, of paying on time, really managed the cash flow well for planning. We now have uh, managed cash flow payments to our advantage and have a real time data on the amount of accruals. That's what you're trying to do. And, uh, you know, there are many, many examples of successful implementations. So keystrokes and blind spots really, really, uh, you know, raise the error rates. Uh, so data entry, when you're doing a lot of data entry, there's always an error rate. So it's a question of how large it is. Um, you know, here's a, a great quote from this uh, VP of operations. We receive many invoices by paper, but only a few with uh, EIPP. So EIPP is um, enterprise invoice um, processing and payment. And it's really, achieving the invoice in a um, XML or a digital format that can be then translated directly and managed by the ERP financials. Um, so um, that's a trend, but the adoption worldwide is only about 5% for EIPP, maybe 6%, a little higher in Europe. Um, there are EIPP networks um, that will do translations to make that. Um, some of the advantages of EIPP is, is that some of these networks actually match buyers uh, or billers and billies. So they have a, a, um, a, an enablement network that, that can help you. So if you're a certain, if you have a certain profile from an invoice standpoint where you have, you know, uh, 60 or 80% of your invoices coming from four or five partners, uh, vendor partners, then, then you can really take advantage of the EIPP network they'll help you enable the connections and you can start to move aggressively away from paper to EIPP, which is the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to get to an end-to-end -end electronic, you know, turning your business into data, as I said. Um, and, and um, you know, that, that's really where you can get, instead of a 25% ROI, which you get from doing these clever paper um, uh, management that we'll talk about, uh, digitizing that, with EIPP, the ROI can be up to 50%. Um, so it's, it's definitely the way to go. It's just very, very hard from a change management perspective for companies to get there. Um, one of the things that that will solve another, and, and these solutions I'll talk about today will solve is better visibility into AP processes. Um, they just don't know what uh, status of a given invoice is anytime in the process. Um, so this means that, you know, documents are sitting in queues, employees spending time jumping from phones to different online apps. That's what the reality is in a lot of these AP departments. So let's talk about uh, content management's role in, in, in helping this. Um, you know, and I like to say we have, we have two different worlds that we're operating on here. There's this customer experience world at the top, and there's this digital operational excellence. So think of this in, the, in, in old terms, it would be the front office and the back office, but uh, they're, they're very different in that that customer ecosystem, you know, is now reaching out to via social media and via mobility, you know, to encompass a much broader kind of, um, you know, circling constellation of, of, of interactions. And the digital operational excellence is, is much more of a, not a linear supply chain. It's, you know, it's much more of a, a cooperative uh, exercise with, with with your supplies, with your suppliers, and so forth. But the bottom line is that um, you know when you digitize a business, you can't just say I'm going to add new mobile apps and uh, get new social media analytics up in the customer experience area. If you really want to get the advantages of digital business, you have to think about the operational excellence, how to digitize those back office processes that really affect that customer journey. Um, so it's it's uh, there's a tendency. I think to focus on the technologies that just focus on that on that customer experience part, um, you know, and and to ignore that if you don't have 
you know, the proper uh, core systems and you haven't tamed those processes that you're not going to get good customer experience because the order's not going to go to the right place. Uh, some, some fundamental aspect of uh, service will, will, will be missing. So, um, you know, if you look at all the technologies that are important for that bottom half of that chart of digitizing operational processes, uh, this is a technology radar that uh, we're, we're going to publish in a few months. But basically, these are the things that are important. You know, it's important to use electronic signature uh, to get that wet signature out of the out of the paper environment. It's important to have good process management, good dynamic case management. Um, you know, content analytics, content analytics to be able to understand invoices coming in and do um, you know use adaptive and learning techniques to improve. Uh, the ability to to uh, assess and treat invoices coming in based on their fingerprint or shape, based on the on the uh, you know the, uh, the 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 template you set up, uh, being able to have um, an automatic um, uh, adjustment of those templates without administrative support by using analytics is a critical you know distinction in 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 this area. You need customer communications management, uh, which is the ability to generate content in a personalized way in a cross-channel environment. So these are all of the, um, of the technologies to really get to a digital business focusing on the operational excellence piece. Now for invoice processing, we're gonna talk about the ones that are most important here. Uh, that would be multi-channel capture because you're capturing in a lot of um, you know, invoices and paper. We're gonna talk about um, uh, case management and um, you know, and and uh, transactional content services. Those are really the most important from a um, invoice processing standpoint. So this is your your general workflow, your swim lane for invoice processing. Uh, you probably have seen various versions of this, um, but basically a purchase order is filled out. Um, you know, you get approval signatures. Um, you know, that's internally. And again, those should be electronic signatures, uh, is particularly inter internally, so there's no paper yet. Um, you know, you have, um, a, you know, handoff to purchasing. So what should happen there is that in the workflow, a requisition folder is set up so that, that when the actual invoice comes in, you're going to automatically match that to the requisition folder and have a complete set of information. That should all happen automatically based on OCRing the header information of that purchase order. Um, so you place the order, and what you're trying to do with um, these systems is, is to reduce the off-the-radar purchasing without POs. Um, and there are multiple things that you're trying to do, but one of them is you're trying to um, you know, reduce the number of, of uh, purchases that come in you know, without authorized purchase orders. So that's one thing. Um, you're also trying to uh, reduce um, the number of uh, purchases that go outside of your, um, you know, of your of your uh, certified vendors that, uh, that you're trying to build volume discounts with. There's a whole another set of technology called e-purchasing technology, which really gives you a, a your own little Amazon, or your own little portal in a company, so that you can, you know, um, and provide everything that you might need, uh, and that way you restrict where it's going to, and you get the volume discounts and so forth. Uh, but anyway, that's the purchasing side, All right? So, you know, when the invoice comes in, the supplier fills the order, you get the invoice, um, you know, you go, if it's paper, you get it, you, you know, you have to go through the mailroom sorting and delivery. And at some point, you know, it comes into a workflow, it comes into a multi-channel capture system, it's captured, the header information is OCR'd, it goes into uh, a workflow process, it tries to find that initial requisition folder, it matches that all up. In the current AP systems that we're talking about here, um, you can do some simple business rules with embedded business rules and say, okay, if the amount is under X, you have that information. If it's uh, from this list of vendors, uh, you know, between X and Y, um, you can create some simple rules and say, I'm just gonna approve that automatically. And it goes to straight through processing. So no humans involved, All right? So, if it doesn't, it would get kicked out into another queue and you'd have a human accounts payable specialist look at it. If not, it'll go straight through. And you're trying to get that, that happy path, that straight through process, higher and higher and higher over time. And you're trying to create 
the auditing around this so that those business rules and policies are, are transparent to anyone wanting to look. And there are problems in this area from a compliance standpoint, so you want to do that. So that's a little bit of the kind of workflow we're talking about. Um, capture is very important. Um, so um, if you look at this um, framework for capture, um, most invoicing today on the capture side is you have a, what's, what's called a production capture environment, really set up kind of an extension of the mailroom. You have uh, full-time workers or dedicated folks that are, that are handling the invoices. They're indexing them. They're being released to that workflow I talked about. Uh, but increasingly on the left, um, you're, you're having more on-demand capture, which means that it's coming from non-professional scanners. Uh, it's going into the MFP that might be in the office, multifunction peripheral, which they all have now better, much better scanning capabilities, or it's getting put um, on an employee's phone um, or on a customer's phone. Um, so that's um, what we call mobile capture, and that's increasing in, in, uh, in, in use tremendously. We sort of started with check, you know, check deposit for banks, but now um, you know, uh, most financial services institutions are putting in, um, they're putting in generalized mobile capture platforms. So they're allowing on-demand capture to occur. The bottom line is that the volume from the production capture of invoices coming in is moving to these other more distributed um, applications. So capture is getting, uh, you know, more, more distributed and more on-demand. Uh, this doesn't affect the backend workflow as such, but you need to have the mobile capture support and you need to have the production as well. And you need to have the interaction to uh, multifunction devices and the office technology to be able to use that scan to archive capabilities that's available there. So capture is important. Um, business process management and content management is important. Um, looking at it as a case is, is important. So when you particularly for um, those um, scenarios where the uh, uh, process was not approved automatically and it was kicked into a queue for a human being. For some of those uh, queues, uh, there may be more complexity in reviewing it. Maybe it was a rogue purchase order. Maybe it requires a three-way three match or three-way three -way authorization. Uh, maybe it uh, was a significantly high amount. Um, so those might be treated in this way as a as a case where you have people, data, process, policies, events, all tracked there. So, um, you know, so content management, business process management, really important to obtain invoice management, reducing paper costs, providing versioning and audit trails, and using workflow to manage milestones. And as I said earlier, there are a lot of companies that aren't doing this yet um, that, that need help in this area. So finally, just some recommendations, and I'll turn it over to Charles. Um, you know, this is, when, when, when you look at this process, when we survey companies in this process, here were their pain points. And, and here's, uh, you know, how we, we responded to each one. So, uh, you know, pain point, you know, what is the state of accounts payable? I don't know basic status information. Uh, you know, how much of the process consists of non-valuated work. So typical responses, inconsistent processes, high cost per transaction, anywhere from seven to $12 per invoice. That's very high. AP employees are spending all their time processing, chasing paper, highly manual. That's the big pain point. Um, in terms of people, you know, workers must use many systems to must jump back and forth. So this is sort of the people view of the use of the system, internal people, phone, email, paper, filing, you know, 1980s uh, communication. The information must be maybe centralized in the ERP suite, but all other often valuable information and not available when needed. So that's, again, that structured content is, is the key. That's what they're chasing. You know, they have the structured information is there. It's not holistic enough to really uh, resolve the case. Um, business process management maturity, uh, significant difficulty measuring performance or ideal metrics. You know, what are the key metrics here? Um, you know, uh, they, they should be things around uh, meeting, uh, you know, payment advantages, um, you know, the, the sort of time, the cycle time for, for managing an invoice, the percentage of straight through process. Um, you know, these are the metrics, I think, for enforced processing. Uh, they need better reporting on aging uh, invoices. Um, overall, there's very low confidence in the reporting <coughs> that's coming from systems. So in 
conclusion, um, I, I think that despite invoice processing being a, um, you know, a known pain point for a lot of opportunity to apply some of these emerging agile technologies that we've talked about uh, to really, to really get you to an automated process and to give you a transition to EIPP, which is the ultimate goal for getting rid of paper and getting to a tamed process. So thank you very much. I'll turn it back over to Charles now. Fantastic. Thank you, Craig. Uh, fascinating discussion as always. You know, I always get a lot out of listening to you uh, present on the topics. And this is one that, uh, you know, while I do feel like, you know, the industry has been uh, certainly adapting and adopting to uh, AP automation, that there's still a lot of technology and still a lot of twists and turns in the story out there. So it is fascinating to think about how we as an industry are participating in, a, in an area where there's sort of continued growth opportunity and a lot of success stories along the way. So I uh, appreciate that. I'm going to uh, sort of just continue the story a little bit further, uh, talk a little bit more uh, about, you know, automation, some of the trends that we see uh, through Perceptive and, and some of the areas of opportunity, some of the things that we see and, and, and actually invite customers and prospects to think about as well as they uh, participate in this journey. Um, what's interesting and not a surprise is the, the office of the, the chief financial officer, right, today, the CFO and everybody sort of in that chain of command is really in a, in a period where it's recognized that uh, the, the finance function, including AP and the AP uh, uh, processing areas and shared services can really have a transformative effect on the business. Um, we're seeing this, you know, in, in very real results with many companies around the globe. Uh, really acting as a, as a lever for business transformation. So it is really critical to a lot of business strategies. It's not just about necessarily about better transaction processing, but we're really moving through the maturity curves and seeing uh, meaningful business results uh, on the back end. The challenge with that, though, is, you know, we often uh, speak with customers and partners and prospects and so forth, and we hear a lot of these sentiments, right? Uh, for example, we heard, you know, we've purchased AP automation technology and yet we don't feel like we're fully automated. Or, uh, you know, management has really gotten almost addicted to uh, the business benefits which accrue to the business. You know, we, we've seen over the last 10, 15 years, right? Um, 10, 15, 20, 40% returns on these types of investments, whether it was outsourcing, whether it was automation, whether, you know, whatever the, the transformative process was, is, I mean, the results have been significant. And so, you know, at some point, though, uh, many organizations are saying, listen, how do we then now get to that next level of benefit so that we can kind of return these year on year uh, returns to the business that, um, you know, that, that management has grown accustomed to. And then finally, you know, we also hear, listen, we feel like we've kind of hit a glass ceiling. Uh, we've made investments in technologies. We feel like there's more room to go that perhaps a digital universe is within the realm of possibility. But, you know, we ask, how, how do we get there? And so that's why we continue to have what I feel are, are very uh, compelling discussions. When we look at the landscape for technology, uh, most of the technologies uh, for invoice automation, AP automation, are well known. And it really spans, you know, the spectrum here from, you know, EDI, which is probably the most efficient way to conduct transactions, to EIPP and the promises there, to good old-fashioned, you know, scanning and P-cards and so forth. And so the question often is, is what is the right mix? Uh, what should I be looking at today? What should I be working on? And what's changed? And I think the most fascinating part of the discussion is when we engage with customers is to help understand, in some cases, listen, the technology you may have acquired three, five, ten years ago uh, may be very different now from what you had grown accustomed to previously. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about that today. Uh, as Craig pointed out, though, you know, volumes of invoices continue to increase. And almost surprisingly, we look at uh, the total volume. This was produced in a study last year from a group that said there are about a half a billion invoice or half a trillion, 500 billion uh, invoices uh, transacted, you know, every year of which about 170 billion are actually uh, business to business, business to government invoices. What's interesting is only about 8% of those are electronic today. 
Now, granted, the rate of growth of electronic invoices is pretty significant, growing about 20% year on year. But what's fascinating is the paper reality is just that. And so it's not something that we can you know, ignore. Uh, it's something that we need to address. And world-class organizations are addressing it very aggressively today, not waiting for it to, to you know, sort of work itself out, but aggressing, uh, aggressively addressing it today because it really presents opportunity. You know, when you think about it, paper has kind of gotten a bad rap. Um, while being very effective way for many businesses traditionally and even currently uh, to submit purchase orders and invoices, you know, paper is often sort of conceived of as presenting a barrier, almost a wall, right? It's a wall to things like uh, productivity, efficiency, uh, visibility, right? Even data quality. And, and, and so, you know, the way you address this wall uh, really helps forecast or predict the outcome that you'll have in all of those areas, right? And, and how you create better efficiency, better productivity, better uh, data quality, and so forth. And to do so, you know, one of the ways that, um, you know, we see companies addressing this is, is as fundamental as the area of capture. And Craig touched on this and, and kind of the advancements that are taking place in capture. Capture for many of us may seem like, listen, we've been there, we've done that, but um, the interesting thing, and quite frankly, the refreshing thing to know is there's been a lot of advancements in capture technology that can deliver new results at a, at a whole new level. And so it's almost as though you have to really reimagine what data capture can do for the organization and sort of reset your expectations uh, for where those you know, benefits may accrue. I'll talk about that in just a second. I think it's important, though, to define a couple of important terms. When you think about identifying areas for capture-driven transformation, or even just simply trying to get your arms around uh, what your systems may be delivering for you today. These terms, some of which may be familiar, uh, are pretty straightforward. OCR in the bottom left is just that, right? That's the recognition technology. That's the, the technology that is tried and true when applied properly for simply translating what's on a scanned or electronic document into something that's machine readable. And the good news is, is today, OCR is mature technology. Uh, when it comes to reading, you know, particularly machine printed uh, uh, text, but even increasingly, you know, hand printed text, uh, that technology has gotten to very high levels of reliability. FLE is what we think of as field level extraction. Field level extraction is a, is a somewhat technical term for uh, data extraction with the benefit being, you know, if technology can lift the field of data accurately off of a document like an invoice, that means you don't have to key it, okay? So the benefit there translates very simply into higher levels of field level extraction mean fewer keystrokes required to input the data. But frankly, uh, you know, in the real world of AP automation, really nobody cares about OCR or field level extraction rates. The nirvana, the end game, is what we call STP or straight through processing. And this is not what you may think of when you think of, you know, capture as a way to simply get it into workflow. Uh, we don't think of that as, as straight through processing. Straight through processing is where the combination of people, process, and technology work in harmony so that a, for example, a PO-based invoice can be, the data can be extracted, it can be automatically validated at the front end of the process. And if that information is correct, it can process straight through into your ERP system and post for payment. Straight through processing, touchless, lights out processing is really the end game. And, and that's where we see the best organizations in the world having the very highest levels of success, uh, even with invoices that are paper-based or email-based or what you might think of as being uh, very, very difficult to automate. So we keep our eye on the ball, and, and as we work with customers, and certainly as we continue to grow with the industry, uh, we recognize that that's, that's the end game of all this, uh, this technology. The benefits when you get there, though, uh, and some of the things to think about is, you know, it, it's really about increasing the auto posting rates, uh, doing things going beyond simply matching at a header level on an invoice and actually getting down into the line pairing, right? Many of the companies that we work with actually have fairly complex uh, purchasing processes. 
the invoices are complex. The, uh, uh, the number of purchase orders that need to be matched are complex. And so, you know, it's not simply enough to get the data. We actually want to go a step further and pair that data so that when we do push it through to the ERP system, it's been fully reconciled. And the list uh, kind of goes down. What we hear as the next level of transformation for many of the uh, college shared service centers, uh, global business centers, and so forth, is to really look at standardization, so process standardization, um, uh, technology standardization, end-to-end -end processing, or what we think of increasingly as global process ownership, and sort of complete harmonization. And, and uh, these are important drivers, or if you're at a point where you're thinking about these, these are top of mind, then the important thing to sort of take away is that uh, other companies are successfully getting there, and there are some technologies uh, that can help do so. All right. Um, to point out, uh, as I sort of touched on, is, you know, what you may have implemented as data capture, which may have been fully appropriate in the time and place that you evaluated and, and uh, implemented, it has uh, continued to change. So, you know, uh, uh, we've invested, uh, other companies have invested significant research and development into this capture as a platform type of uh, value proposition, such that, you know, what you may have known previously as template-based or zonal or uh, even some of these, uh, what had previously been called sort of, you know, self-learning uh, technologies have really transformed into the latest uh, generation of, of capture technologies, which work more like your human operators would in terms of being able to understand contextually what the data is on a document so that it can extract it, rather than being worked, uh, uh, you know, having to refer to forms or fixed fields or positional location. And that opens up, suddenly opens on, uh, you know, unlocks a whole new uh, set of value drivers for the organization that really allow you to do some really important things in terms of uh, establishing, you know, the data that can be extracted. And I'll get to that in just a moment as to what some of that value is. Um, just to help you give us a, a sense, you know, the, the, Prior capture technologies, while they were very, uh, you know, very good at recognizing information, if they generally know where to look, this new, the advances in, in capture technology uh, almost work based uh, like a, a human person would, right? And so, you know, while the human mind is capable of sorting out misspelled words and contextually relevant information, most machines struggle with that. And it's only with uh, some of the newer technologies that we're able to sort this out. And this gives a whole new uh, level of context to the data that's being extracted off of documents such as invoices so that you can provide it truly as information, right? And that I think is really what the end game is uh, uh, in today's AP operations. When we talk to, uh, you know, call it shared service centers or folks that are heavily invested in uh, rolling out global operations around financial processes, be it uh, AP automation or broader financial set of processes, you almost, you know, come up with a model that looks like uh, looks something like this. If you look on the left hand side, you know, I sort of think about it in terms of the, the work breakdown and on the right hand side, you know, is ultimately the goal and the typical investment strategy, the strategy for helping to mature uh, these operations is, is almost builds like a pyramid, right? Where at the base of the pyramid is the goal of transactional efficiency. This is where uh, at the lowest order of magnitude, right, you're trying to drive to the lowest cost transaction. And this is typically the value that, you know, heads of shared services and CFOs are looking for when they invest in centralization or the first order of automation is drive the transactional cost as low as it can go. And so your strategies there um, are either very simply, you either automate or you outsource. And at a given point in time, and it's been done, you know, the, the, uh, you know, the organization, your culture and so forth, uh, you may choose a path of outsourcing. So you outsource many of your back office functions, or you may decide that having the control of uh, keeping it in-house but looking at automation is appropriate. But, but basically, to drive that level of transactional efficiency, which is so crucial, uh, you, know, you really have to, to pick one or the other. Establishing a strong foundation, though, really allows you to get to the next level, which I will call um, error remediation. So on a strong foundation of transactional efficiency, you can start to address and really attack the next set of challenges which typically uh, uh, 
you know, that you typically find, right, are around the quality of process and the quality of the, da of the data. And your answer here is you can't automate or outsource your, your data quality issues, right? You simply have to address them. The key to effectively addressing these challenges, though, is often having the data and the insight in to understand where the biggest problems uh, are coming from. And so it's not uncommon to begin to use uh, principles of Lean and Six Sigma to help uh, drive out you know, uh, cost in very discrete parts of a process. But this is typically the, the next level of, of value that's created in these service centers. And then finally, you know, as Craig also alluded to, right, everybody's talking about data. Everybody's talking about analytics, right? And so this becomes kind of the highest order of magnitude. And frankly, um, this is where I think the industry is really starting to pivot and understand that it's not, it's no longer enough to be a cost center. Um, you know, this, as a back office function, right, simply being a cost center is, is uh, not fully sustainable, but there really is value that can be accreted into the organization. One point of this, though, is to understand that analysis does not equal reporting, okay? So a drive towards reporting is sort of has to be understood at all levels of this pyramid. You know, reporting, uh, consolidated reporting, KPIs, metrics, and so forth needs to be something that we typically see sort of built into the fiber of the organization throughout. But this ability to use the data, in this case, that's collected from invoices as well as these processes, to enlighten and open up new sources of distinct value for your organization is something that can be very, very powerful. And frankly, uh, what we see today is it's, it's more, you know, it's less about the process delivering the value. It's more about uh, things like the time value of money, um, the, the management of working capital, uh, the ability to work on strategic partnerships with your suppliers. That's where distinct value, value that frankly is, uh, can be oftentimes many times greater than what you got through the simple transactional efficiency is really where you uh, start to see new benefits. And so, you know, it's important to, to go back, though, and point out that the only way organizations get to that highest order of magnitude in terms of benefit at the value added uh, is to build on this level of, of high uh, transactional efficiency. And so what we see is for many organizations, it almost becomes a recursive process of evaluation. Right. So you build a foundation, that foundation matures, it delivers a set of benefits. Uh, and then for many organizations, as they think about globalization or, or broader process standardization, they effectively go back and reevaluate the technologies and the processes that they're using at that foundational level to really make sure and ask the tough questions to see that they're uh, delivering the full benefits that they can and should be. OK. Um, Craig, I think, you know, you wound up the presentation, I think, on a very relevant point in terms of thinking about, you know, what is it uh, your customers of Forrester come and ask, you know, about the state of AP automation or business uh, process management and so forth. You know, they, you, you touched on some important points, uh, things to think about. And, and we think about it maybe using slightly different terms, but I think it's very relevant in terms of building solutions and evaluating solutions that are integrated, scalable and complete. Right. Integrated meaning not just that the uh, systems that you're using are integrated at a at an interface, right? A data interface level. That's incredibly important, right? So you don't want to pick data up and have to move it through a set of processes. Uh, but having data integration is incredibly important. User experience integration is equally important. So uh, the willingness to Open one application, do a set of work there, close that application, open another application, right, that creates these distinct and disjointed processes uh, is increasingly becoming something that's unsustainable or that, you know, customers are unwilling to invest in. So there's an assumption that the user experience, the data experience, the full end-to-end -end, uh, process becomes integrated. The second piece is around scalability, right? These applications, these solutions need to be scalable. And scalable means, uh, you know, obviously in terms of volume. So as the business grows, you want to be able to support uh, the full extent of, of the global business in terms of document volume on a solution. Uh, but it also goes a lot to the maturity of the organization, right? And so uh, if some of our processes may be uh, more mature, perhaps in North America or parts of uh, Europe, but less mature in, for example, other regions of the world, you know, we need to be able to support 
the maturity of the, of the organization wherever it exists uh, and help sort of bring it along to uh, high efficiency. That's important. The other notion of scalability is around uh, the types of documents. And so today we're talking about AP automation, but increasingly, you know, we start to think about it. it's, it's, you know, purchase to pay is not just the pay, right? It's the entire process of purchase to pay. And I think uh, certainly Forrester would agree that, you know, there, there's tremendous benefit in thinking about purchase to pay or perhaps, you know, order to cash or, or these types of global processes uh, from one end to the other. And then finally, it's about the completeness. Uh, completeness is really this ability to understand, you know, if I receive an invoice, can I post it in SAP and see that transaction uh, quickly? Can I measure the effectiveness of that transaction from end to end so that I can understand, you know, um, very quickly, uh, uh, you know, how to optimize not only the process, but, you know, the result, right? The, whether it's a better supplier relationship, better cast management, or whatever the ultimate outcome is, okay? So, um, so with that, right, I mean, as I mentioned, right, I, we, we sort of see these processes as somewhat recursive in many organizations. Uh, it's a constant reevaluation of here's where we are, kind of where's the next frontier. And so uh, what, what uh, Perceptive did is we actually worked with uh, Industry Association. It's the Institute of Financial Operations. And we developed a tool, which I'll just uh, mention to everyone briefly here. We call it the uh, Paperless Office Maturity Model. Uh, it's available at paperlessofficematurity.com. You can go visit it on the web. And this is just one way to help your organization kind of understand where you are in terms of uh, your maturity as an organization. So you can think about the types of technologies, uh, process changes that might help you get to the next level. We've used this literally with hundreds and hundreds of companies globally. Uh, it's a free tool. It you know, we intentionally balanced uh, ease of use on the number of questions you have to answer versus, you know, the efficacy of the uh, of the output. And we think we struck a pretty good balance. But, um, you know, it's open. Uh, you're welcome to use it. You answer 17 questions. And at the end, we'll actually present you with a report. Uh, the report has five levels of uh, maturity, if you will, from level one, which we think of as being paper-based, uh, to level five, which is paper-free. So back to the comments around sort of thinking about paper as being a barrier, we actually sort of built the model with that premise in mind. But within each level of paperless uh, maturity from one to five, there are, there are multiple dimensions, seven different dimensions of maturity that really help you get a better sense for what does it mean uh, to be, you know, at one level or another. And what we do is we actually provide uh, a highlighted rubric or a score sheet back to you so that you can see, listen, we're, we're as an organization, we're more mature perhaps in one area in terms of how we receive invoices, but in other areas of invoice automation, you know, there may be some things that we can do that would be considered best practices to kind of help us get to the next level or quite frankly, even leapfrog a level and, and uh, you know, go further faster. All right. So, uh, so as we wrap up, and I uh, uh, just uh, you know, as we think about, I think we have a couple of minutes left for some questions. You know, we're very much in the business at Perceptive Software of kind of creating uh, a complete environment, a set of applications and technologies that help many of our customers uh, drive the maturity of their organizations, regardless of size or scope. You know, further into their uh, efficiency and productivity around invoice automation. And so, you know, from procure to pay, order to cash, uh, rec to receipt, uh, regardless of the size and scope of, uh, of your AP operation, I mean, you know, we've got pretty deep domain expertise in a lot of these areas, and uh, it's an area that we're also very passionate about. And so um, with that, I've built a pretty robust platform. So with that, okay, so what I want to do now is uh, I want to take a breath. We'll flip to the last slide in the discussion here. And uh, I know we've got the lines open. And so uh, if you'd like, uh, just as a reminder, there's a chat button in your window. And if you have a question, we have a moderator standing by. Uh, I will actually help moderate those questions and uh, we'll be happy to direct them to uh, Craig. So let me start with the first question. All right, so Craig, um, on uh, one of your slides, so in, in one of your slides, right, you were talking about uh, evolution, which was a fantastic slide, and you were talking about digitizing operational processes. Question is, why has there been minimal success on the electronic content integration 
why does that why does that seem to be uh, either on pause or or sort of judged uh, to not be quite as successful as others? Huh. So electronic content integration, so we acronym ECI, um, we define as a as capability to either move con uh, unstructured content from one repository to another. Um, uh, so from you know SharePoint to some other repository or vice versa. Uh, but also the ability to go out and uh, have APIs that allow you to grab content from, say, other websites, uh, external data, and bring that in to enhance the, the unstructured data. So, um, you know, I just think it's, it's, it's early. Uh, you know, I think that the technology is there and, um, you know, we just need a slightly broader vision uh, on these applications of what really can add value to those applications. And a lot of it is that unstructured content that is uh, elsewhere needs to be brought into, um, you know, to an access. So, so I'm seeing that happening quite a bit in different, in different use cases. Hmm. Good. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. Um, let me ask another question, uh, which is, is always personally fascinating is we talk a little bit about EIPP and there's no question that digitizing business is, uh, is, is a priority, you know, for most, what are your, what are your feelings about email, right? So EIPP, Maybe one, you could talk a little bit more about what some of the challenges are. If, if EIPP seems a, you know, an, an easy way to generate a, a lot of return on investment, why is there not broader adoption? And what about good old fashioned email? Yeah, uh, well, it's you know, partially uh, the reason is the diversity of vendors that companies deal with. So um, EIPP really makes sense in the, in, in the same context that the old EDI made sense when you have a small number of suppliers you're dealing with. Um, the more you uh, have diversity in that supply base, uh, the more supplier enablement for EIPP becomes harder. Um, so that's, that's one thing. Um, but I think more importantly is that companies just are not focusing on uh, moving to electronic and to digital as fast as they need to be. Um, and unfortunately accounts payable and processes that are shared services across organizations are not getting the same level of priority that that upper part of my chart is uh, where they it's around the customer experience ecosystem right so it's you know you need you know the uh, you know to get your your website that your customers come in and buy you need to get that to responsive design or you need to get the new app out there or you need to get a better understanding of your customers through social and big data you have to look at the internet of things and how that's affecting your business so there's a lot of uh, folks in that area, you know, AP, HR, uh, contracts, legal, they tend to be lagging behind in terms of uh, that, that focus. So that's another reason that uh, I think digitization is slow. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Um, this is sort of a question, maybe I'll, I'll tag team this one with you. Uh, you know, you get asked, and I, I think you touched on it, maybe we could just explore it a little bit more about how uh, capture technologies are you know, do you see them as really becoming platforms for input, right? Um, uh, you know, rather than, you know, sort of a, uh, you know, case by case uh, basis. I mean, how, how do you see that evolving and where are the natural overlaps? Yeah, so that's, that's a great question. And uh, we're a lot about um, the transformation. We sort of started that thinking process with what we called multi-channel capture. And that was our last review of the industry was based on that. Uh, but now we're thinking about, you know, digital content transformation or electronic content transformation as being a generalized platform. So you think of traditional capture, production capture was very much line of business oriented. And it was very much, um, you know, a dedicated function uh, really by people to escape the mailroom. Uh, and now you start seeing the diversity of formats that are coming into companies. They don't know what they are, you know, and uh, they, you can do much more things with them than traditional, um, you know, pixel management of images coming in. So, uh, and then you add mobile capture to that, which is, uh, you know, a huge driver for a lot of applications. Uh, uh, you know, that's what millennials will want to interact with you. They're going to want to take a video of a transaction and send it in. So you're seeing this, um, this, this really strong need for a uh, generalized capture solution by companies. Uh, I've seen banks that have flipped from being 80% paper to 20% digital uh, flip just the, uh, uh, the other way in, in within two years to be 80% digital, 20% paper. So companies aren't ready for that. But I think the answer is to you know, not 
to think of capture in a siloed way from a use case perspective or a department perspective, but to think of having a generalized capability that can do mobile capture, that can take in email with PDFs attached to it, that can take in XML as in EIP formats, that can take in and have the capabilities to recognize what came in, the uh, ability to transform what came in appropriately, and the ability to move it to the right workflow. No, that's great. That's great. We, you know, so it's an it, interesting uh, dynamic. And listen, I've been doing this long enough so that we've seen a couple of, you know, uh, trends and turns almost repeat back on themselves. You know, it used to almost be as, as capture was a uh, technology, uh, you know, you see it as capture was sort of considered just as a way to get a document into an archive. Right. And I think um, what's happened, though, is uh, the, the use cases and frankly, on the vendor side, you know, there's been a lot more sophistication put into capture technologies so that um, what we've experienced more of more recently is, right, the, um, the business case for AP automation that's got a heavy capture component is, uh, is really driven around, for example, AP automation, right? So if you're going to look at be it intelligent capture or however you're funding it, um, what we tend to see is many organizations you know, focus on that being the business case and the primary way they're going to generate how to, you know, a return on investment and make a purchase decision. What is your advice, though, right, for uh, an organization that inherently un understands the value of a broader capture strategy, uh, but still needs to build a business case based on, for example, invoice automation? Do you, what are your thoughts on that? Where are the natural adjacencies or, or how might you suggest uh, to, to an organization to kind of navigate that? Hmm. Well, uh, so it could be a long answer, but I, 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 we don't have time for a long answer. But, um, you know, the internal justification for that investment, um, you know, has to be related to uh, customer experience or driving a, a much better outcome that ties in with the business goals. So it can't be um, just, you know, uh, buried in, in some operational metric at the document processing level. It's got to tie to, um, you know, a, a customer experience need to be able to do mobile capture. Um, it's got to be tied to the ability to, you know, ingest, um, you know, social data feeds that need to go into a Hadoop environment and have analytics applied to them to be able to understand and to make the process much more powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, these, are, these are the drivers that are going to make companies say, okay, uh, we need to look at capture in a different way because we're only, you know, all of our, you know, the, the, the view of the customer today is three dimensional. It's not two. Mm -hmm. And you need to have that unstructured um, third dimension uh, as part of the business process. So, um, you know, there, there's probably a floor of traditional ROI uh, related to this, but I think the driver's got to be, um, you know, how can we tie these operational processes to the customer journey and the customer experience? Because that's what's going to get the business excited. Yeah. No, that's fantastic. Yeah, thank you. I, I just feel like that's what, an area that... Uh, it's a, it's a legitimate challenge for many organizations, right? Just because of the way they set up budgets and funding, uh, project management and scope and so forth. So you're almost caught in an interesting paradigm between having to fund an initiative based on a specific ROI and a span of control for whoever is the, you know, the project owner at that level, but then also trying to understand uh, you know, the bigger benefits, which may accrue downstream, right? But that, you um, you know, can can create a uh, a value proposition that is in fact much much greater. So, uh, interesting dynamic and and something that um, you, we get asked about quite frequently. So I'll have them call you, Craig, if that's <laughs> right. That's uh, fine. I'll, I'll be out that day. But go ahead. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Terrific. So uh, if we can ask one more question, um, what do you think is the future on the ERP? financial provider side in terms of helping to sort of solve these challenges uh, that you've outlined eloquently today, um, you know, in terms of thinking about how they are going to continue to span this gap, right? Is it through further acquisitions? Is it through uh, platforms that are more open? Is it through uh, vendors, even like Perceptive, that just understand the unstructured information gaps, right? Information and process gaps. Where do you see the, where's the yeah. future? 
So, um, you know, I think all of the, the packaged providers, uh, SAP being the largest, um, you know, are, are really focused on moving their solution to, uh, to the cloud. Um, you know, so SAP has HANA, for example. Um, they've got to get, uh, they've got to balance their revenue, which is painful between on-premise and, and cloud. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they've got to build a, a much better mobile experience to do that, right? So mm-hmm. when you look at these types of workflow and business rule and process efficiencies, I think it's going to continue to not be their strength. Uh, it's not going to be their focus or the strength, um, given that. And that they're going to continue to depend on the ecosystem that's evolved around them to support that. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't see, um, uh, you know, a strong case management or strong BPM or strong uh, content management ever being uh, directly supplied, you know, by the the the, the oracles or their SAP of, the, of you know of the world. They're not going to compete with those more focused providers uh, very well that that uh, you know do that for a living. Yeah. Terrific. All right. Well, listen, um, so I, I know we need to wrap up. I thank everybody uh, uh, for, for joining us today. Um, great conversation. Great dialogue. Always a pleasure, Craig. I, I do appreciate it. Thank you, Charles. Yeah. Enjoy this it. podcast uh, concludes our series of topics in AP Automation, uh, but we want to draw your attention again to the AP Automation e-digest. This and the other four video casts in our series are available for replay at any time by clicking on the appropriate links in the tool. We also encourage you to share the direct link with your business colleagues. So again, thank you. Thank you, Craig. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. We'll see you next time.